Howdy folks, today we're going to be building this 135 scale from Airfix M36B1 GMC tank destroyer. It's a cross between a Sherman and a Jackson. Let's do this. Okay folks. My first section on the build is these two pieces here make up your drive sprockets. They simply just get glued into place like that and that's it for the drive sprocket like I've done here. Your suspension arms consist of two wheels and two suspension arms when they put together it looks somewhat like this and then once this is dry you need to do these two bogey pieces and this bogey piece slots through here it's quite a tight fit and once you've got that piece in it requires this looking piece here with the springs and that sits on the inside there which is tricky to, to, to do and you need one of these pieces which are, I think, um, return rollers. Or is it the item wheel? Either way, it's these little wheels, the little wheels that go across the top. I think it's, I think it's idler wheel. It's always getting mixed up between idler and return roller. As I say, once that's in, the other piece of dispension gets sandwiched in in there, glue around the seam, and that's it. Once it's dry, you get something what looks like this. So this is your suspension. So you still have going to have three rolling wheels, and you got your idler wheel or return roller, whatever they call it. And also it pivots. So that's your suspension arms. Okay, folks, just a heads up. This section we're working on now which is the back of the tank these parts call out for a and there is three sprues that consist of a you get two of these sprues which had the wheels on it and stuff which is a and you've got this sprue here with the upper hole and other parts which is a as well so there's three sprues consist of a okay we're going to make up the back of the tank now so this piece here is going to go What's in here? And we got this door that goes over here. And then this makes up the exhaust system. Um, these pieces go on here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this on and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay folks, there's the back of the tank. That's what the back of the tank looks like. We're going to go ahead and attach this to the uh, hole now. Okay, just one other small tip I've got to mention. Um, on the back of this uh, tank, this back door has a handle on it. So if you've got fine detail parts like these handles which are here instead of um, damaging them and causing them to have fragile parts I recommend cutting it off and then come to clean up use 
these needle nose L shaped pliers I call them or pincers So if you can see that once you've got it in there quite tightly give it a fair decent push hold it firmly get your uh, sanding stick you're going to use a skinny a couple of swipes and then it stops a piece flinging off or going on the floor and it doesn't break it Okay folks, these sections here go on the lower hole, so you've got this square piece, this goes up from the underside, I think it's like a skate patch, you've got these fenders with the L shape, get a slot in here, so there's two of those on each side, you've got these front pieces will get slot in here, And then these transmission cover cases get slotted, slotted on, on those as well. So we're going to go ahead and glue this to the lower hole now. Okay folks, all the front parts all done. I put in the uh, suspension as well. The back parts all put together. Um, the transmission casing is going to go on the front here. Like so, and the drive sprockets end with the idler wheels. I like to leave off to when I come to do the track so I can adjust it and stuff. So, we're going to go ahead and glue this transmission case on now. Okay, folks, I want to talk about this turret on the inside. You can see it's got extra lines, it's asking you in the instructions to cut for, with it for using, using these lines to cut the inside of the turret out because the turret is going to go on top it's too big for this hole so you need to make this hole bigger remember because this tank is made up a mixture of a Sherman and a Jackson so it's a uh, Sherman hole lower hole and the Jackson turret so the two combined doesn't fit so you've got to uh, cut this section out we're going to go incredible. ahead and do this now Okay folks, we've gone ahead and cut out the piece now, it's a little bit rough, but I'm going to keep working it on this, on the sanding sticks and it'll be nice and smooth, but this is basic extension on the turret, for them to, so we can fit the uh, turret. Okay folks, this is the engine deck, simple as that, dropping in this piece. And then this piece, that's the engine deck, and in this case of just dropping it in the back. So we're going to go ahead and glue that into place now. Okay folks, gone ahead and looked in the instructions. This is the next step. Um, hatches are fine, but they want you to put small detail parts on top of the... Uh, upper hole and same as this section all the light guards and covers um, I advise to leave all that off until you've actually attached the upper hole to the lower hole so attach it first because otherwise if you attach all this fine detail parts and you try and attach them together you're going to probably end up breaking them all off but before you do that I do recommend you skip to this page which is here this section here, these two couplers which go at the front of the vehicle, stick them in first because they go up on the inside, stick them in, sandwich in the two halves together and then you can do all the detail work on top. Okay we've gone ahead and glued the, uh, the upper hole to the lower hole now, this is going to be drying, I'm going to let this set and now we're going to be working on the gun breech and upper turret and stuff. These segments here is part of the turret, so we're going to go ahead and do this now.
Okay, I want to talk about this breach quickly. I did have a hard time doing this support strut going across the top. It did break on me, um, but I did manage to get it together. It is a little bit tricky doing this breach. I did try to do it on camera. I managed to get some parts on there, but it is quite fiddly, so just take your time and be careful. Uh, you can have the breach open or closed, but I've gone for the closed option. So just be heads a warning. It's a little bit tricky than it seems. Okay folks, we're on this section here. You've got to remove these two tabs because remember this is a uh, Jackson turret so it doesn't fit the hole so you have to uh, modify it slightly. Um, cut those two pins off which I've done and then you've got to attach these extra pieces on the end which looks like this. Which go on the bottom of the turret. Um, to make the turret fit, so we're going to do this now, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, folks, so I want to talk about this turret section. This bit, remember, you had to cut out this ring to make it fit. It's taken a hell of a lot of work to get this ring completely uh, viable for this turret to fit. Now I've got it enough to fit, and it's going to rotate nice and smoothly, and it locks into place. What in the hell were Airfix thinking? I've never known a kit to have to work on the turret so much. I've never known a kit to be like this before. Quite a hell of a lot of work just to get a turret to fit. But just a heads up. It's a little bit tricky. Okay folks, I've gone ahead and uh, assembled the uh, lower basket and some seats. Before I put the uh, top of the turret on, which is this piece here, before I sandwiching this all together, I'm going to paint on the inside because it's going to be easier to paint this before sandwiching it together. Plus, on the inside of this turret, you've got storage bins and some equipment. So, put all the equipment in, paint this as well, paint this, and then sandwiching the two halves together because it'll be easier to do it, do it that way. And the seats are brown as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and paint this. Okay, folks, this section here is what I'm working on now. It's going to be the gun barrel. You get two options. Two type of barrels and you get two ends you get one which is got a small muzzle brake or you've got this one here which has got quite a large muzzle brake i'm going to go for this one with the larger muzzle muzzle brake so we're going to do this okay folks i want to talk about doing a barrel you probably most people will know this or they might have the tools already but people that don't <coughs> using a normal sanding stick to get a seam line out of a barrel if you rub it constantly to try and get the seam out, you could end up with a flat spot and lose its roundness. So <clears throat> how I do it is by having these tools, which are, which are uh, uh, scribers and scratchers and scrapers, and they've got different shape grooves cut out of them for, for different halves. So this is designed for curvature on tanks and <coughs> uh, barrels and stuff. Again, I've got one here that's like a Christmas tree shape. Again, it's got more curvatures for barrels and curve pieces. This one here is for straight edges. And this one here is it's just a mixture of curved and straight edges. And here you've got a quite a large curve curvature piece. So I'll be using this pointy one. This one's got the tank on it. And my tank barrel roughly at the bottom end is this one here in between just two small ones and the 75 millimeter so it's here what i like to do is use the sanding stick lightly to get off the excess because you're going to find a little bit of burr get rid of most of that come with your scraper Start from this end of the barrel, don't go any further because it's getting fattened so I'm going to have to use a um, slightly larger piece which will probably be 75mm or try a different one. But from here downwards where your seam line is, literally scrape along. Because it's got a curvature it's not going to cause a flat spot. Give that a few, few scrapes come along with 
your fine sander buffer give it a nice buff out wipe off the excess and then you've got a nice smooth finish and it gets rid of the seam line so I'm going to take care of this barrel now okay folks I've gone ahead and painted the inside of the uh, turret I haven't done this on camera because I've done these colours a million times in making models and doing my videos so it's a typical NATO black as a shadow go over with the uh, olive drab and then the same on the inside of this one go over with NATO black to create shadows and then we use olive drab for the base colour which is the green carefully sprayed in the seats which are khaki let this dry ready for the clear coats then we can sandwich the two halves together because that's pretty much going to be the turret once you button this up that makes the basic the bases of the inside of the turret but before I button it up I will so clear coat it and give it a little bit of grime and washes and stuff before buttoning it up. Um, priming the main wear is going to be on the actual um, basket floor is, is, is mainly where you're going to get the wear, I, I imagine. Um, it's going to be more dirty than anything. So Okay, the turret's all put together now. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the gun and the gun mantle on the front of the turret now once that's on I'll show you what that looks like okay I've gone ahead and finished the tank off by putting all the fire detail parts on put the turret on the guns all glued into place it does move up and down I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute or two just to uh, let the glue settle in certain places and then this is ready for the painting stage I'm gonna do a black base for NATO black is a shadow colour and then I'm going to do white highlights um, and then I'll do the uh, olive drab on top Okay folks, I've gone ahead and put a value gear resin plug of sandbags. Uh, it's a piece designed to go on the front of a Sherman. Even though this is a Sherman hull, the piece I've used is for a slightly different Sherman, so it required a little bit of modification down the bottom. The green stuff is Millie Putt or Magic Sculpt or something. It, you mix it up and when it turns green you can make stuff out of it. Just how those sandbags are made but you can make your own. I'm uh, not good enough at attempt to do that yet, so 
I've made up a little bit of a sandbag each end because it doesn't fit on the bottom. Um, the white stuff is a little bit of uh, Vallejo putty just to uh, fill a little bit of a gap. These are ready for paint to sandbag them up and make them um, sandbags yellow and stuff and grimy and whatever. Also on the side of the turret I'm going to put some extra storage like bags. They're already here painted and stuff. The uh, other storage is going to go on the back of the tank. The machine gun's going on the turret. The jerrys are going on the back. So the tank's going to be uh, loaded up with equipment and stuff as well. I've already gone ahead and added the tools as well. So my next step is to uh, paint this sandbag equipment and add all the tools and then it's ready for clear coat again and then it's ready for decals okay we're going to talk about how i'll do my weathering and stuff for the tanks and stuff i'm going to use this color it's a custom mix of like uh nato brown a little bit of black a little bit of red um so it comes like a chipping color i also use this for sometimes um spraying on my tracks to give it like a tarnish of color lightly so give it a good old mix and stir, shake, whatever. Um, and then I use a little bit of sponge. You get this in when you buy Edward kits and stuff, resin products or stuff like that. They normally come in there as protection, so always save them. Make a triangle piece, chop it up at the end so it's all rough and different shapes and stuff. Dip it in your paint. Dab it on the babe Patel. At least ninety percent of it off, so it's down. So you start to get the bare minimum on there, and then all around the leading edges of a tank. Um, where crews would be sliding off or equipment. Um, I don't know if you can see that but it's very subtle it's quite hard to see because American vehicles are dark green and stuff um, it shows up a lot more in German tanks especially the desert ones so I'm gonna go around ahead and do this chipping also once I've done the dark chipping I like to go over with a lighter version of olive drab so if you look at this colour, it's a little bit lighter than a normal olive drab. But this will be, again, even less than I did before. So it shows some of the scratches are not dark or rusty type scratches. These are more paint fade or paint chips effect than it is. Um... So again, in the same, in roughly all go all over in the same places I did before. All along the leading edges of uh, parts that are going to be worn. Again, you might not see it on camera, but it's very subtle. It is hard to see because it's again it's all dark. But I'm going to go ahead and do that one now. Also, I have this one which is engine oil, but also it's got a sh quite a shine to it, so it looks like diesel and stuff and fuel stains, so it works for both kind of technique. So again, a little bit of this um, I like to use as well, very, very minimal, and I like to have it running. around some of the, the um, fuel caps where, where, the, where the diesel fuel stains are where the fuel has, has, has accumulated 
so it's a little bit fuel stains again it's hard to see because the vehicle is, is green but it's it's just little touches like this that makes it just not so plain and boring also in certain areas i like to use tamir black panel liner in certain areas um, you can use this or you can use a brown one for fuel stains as well to, if you haven't got uh, oil or fuel fuel stains again some of this in areas that is shadows Places where fuel can leak or dirt and grime, especially weld seams, it, it looks pretty good in. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now as well. Okay, we're going to do tracks now. I'm going to use for fixing agent odorless thinners from Ming, Vallejo's like Sienna, Vallejo's European Earth. So mixing these randomly with this as a fixing night agent um so it's case of it case of getting a nice decent brush putting your pots ready this can be quite messy using pigments and stuff tank on its side and now it's just pretty much loading up the uh, tracks with the uh, odorless thinners in this case of dipping it into the powder adding it all over different colours and it's just blending this all in All thinners all the way up. All powder. So it makes this brown musky thick paste. The European Earth is, is could be a bit more rusty looking than it is the Light Sienna, so I like to use Light Sienna more than the European Earth, more 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 Light Sienna than European Earth. So I'm gonna go all over all over the tracks now. Once this is dry, you can get a cotton swab and the rubber cleats. You just want to go over all the rubber cleats or you could do it even at this process like I am now just before it dries and clean off the rubber cleats because the constant movement of the vehicle the um, rubber cleats wouldn't really get caked up in mud they'd be more cleaner just the rubber pads Um, and you're going to have to clean up some of this pigment at the bottom so I was going to say we're going to go ahead and do the tracks now and then the side of the tank is the same is the same, same stuff even all inside you will well so load up your brush sometimes you've already got pigment on your brush and you can get away with it with what you've got on there so like inside here is pretty pretty loaded still so it doesn't require a lot of pigment it may look really weird and shiny but I can show you once it's dry uh, it dries a hell of a lot lighter and once it's dry you can go back with a uh, soft brush and you can rub down all the excess
not too much on the um, suspension parts. Over the wheels, and again, don't forget to do the inside of the track. So we're going to go ahead and do do both sides, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Also, I don't know if you can see it. I've used Vallejo's washes, browns, and sand over the vehicle, and then it's a matter of going over with areas and going up and downwards to mimic grime dust rain streaks that sort of thing it looks quite messy on top and then you go over to do your flat services and take as much as you want off you can do little and as much as you want on weathering that's the good thing about it um, if you look here go downwards and then where it's got a, a crease within the uh, bodywork it will accumulate at the bottom just like it how it would as if it was raining down the side of the vehicle, it would collect at the bottom. So we're going to go all over the vehicle now. Um, clean up some of this mud at the front, a little bit too thick for my liking. Also, the sand, this brown stuff you can put over your sandbags to bring them out because it soaks into the cracks and gives it depth. Okay folks, this is the finished tank. Um, it's a pretty good kit. I do recommend to build this kit. There's a few things that I'm not happy with. Um, unfortunately, we get that with most kits or all kits these days. They, uh, we do have small small things we're not happy with. But uh, the kit went together pretty well. I believe the kit was originally Academy. Um, and that's what Airfix use now. Um, as the kits so I decided to use a little bit of stowage on the back as you can see from aftermarket but we go into smaller details the, the negatives I have with this kit is the tracks they didn't go together pretty well so I've had to use staples the back two wheels because of the tension of the tracks caused the two back wheels to bow out so I recommend you using a little bit of super glue or extra glue on the back to stop the uh, wheels from bowing to a v-shape and on the inside of the turret, I don't know if you can see this, on the inside of the turret it's quite dark, but there's no extra flooring, there's no direct plating or anything. Um, the um, Unlike an M10 from, a, a, from Tamiya, they give you a direct plating to go at the bottom of the floor so it doesn't seem so dark, but this doesn't, so it seems a little bit out of place to me, or a bit weird. Um, I'm not sure the real tank would actually be like that, but like I say, this is a cross between a Sherman hull, sorry, yeah, lower hull, the turret and the gun is from a Jackson, so it's a hybrid. Um, that's why they call the tank the M36B1 um, tank destroyer. So it, um, the thing on the front, which is the sandbags, I was ooming and ahhing if to use it or not. For this to fit, I had to remove the lights and the um, pieces on that are on the front to make it smooth. The uh, plug, as they call it, from Value Gear sandbags is designed for a different Sherman hull. I think this is like an M10 hull, or not an M10, sorry, uh, Easy 8 hull or something. So, And this plug is for some other type of Sherman, I'm not quite sure. So I've had to modify it slightly, but now I've got it to fit. The stowage on the turret, the bags, is from Value Gear. There's a couple of those. The tarps on the back, top by the turret, and on the back are Value Gear tarps. On the back, you get the um, bracket to house stowage as well. But in the kit, they just tell you to put the bracket on, but they don't, don't tell you to put anything in there. So it's down to you how you want to load it up. So I chose. Some jerry cans that come in the, come in the kit. Again, they don't tell you what to do with them, but they're just there as extras. So I chose one jerry can in a box, tied that down with some string. The uh, 50 cal that come with the kit was highly detailed, but in, in process of me clear coating it, 
somehow I managed to knock it and break it, so I had to replace it with a spare one that you get in the kit, which is good, good enough for them to replace extras in the kit. Um, like you saw me do with the weathering, the weathering came out reasonably well. Um, I'm never a fan of rubber tracks anyway. Um, would I build this kit again? I would build this one again. Um, but I would probably do it slightly different. I wouldn't do the sandbags or anything. There is a French version of this, but I didn't go like that route. I, I got nothing against the French, but I wanted to do the American one. This is from 1945, I believe, Germany. So towards the end of the war. Of them charging to Berlin or whatever. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's a good kit. I recommend it. And this is my finished tank. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Um.